Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the 1970 TR6 restoration in the Rusty Beauty's shop. Today, uh, I'm not really sure what we're gonna be working on. It's been about two weeks since I worked on this car, so it's the beginning of 2024. And finally, the Christmas break in our house is over. <laughs> Starting from December 22nd, I believe, we had a full house here with all our kids and everybody and we went places and we've done stuff so i was barely able to work i worked a little bit on this car here just to finish a video that i started before the break so i can post it but that was it i did a little bit of work on the wiring here under the dash i also worked with my son on his miata but uh, real work i haven't done so today finally it is i believe january the 4th so Finally, I am back to full steam. I don't even know what to start with, but under the Christmas tree, there was a package that actually came for this girl. So let's open it and see what's in it. And maybe that's gonna give us an idea what to work on today. All right, so let's see who the secret Santa for this car was. Tan, tan, tan. It was Moss Motors. Now, as I was working on the car so far, I randomly remember that we're missing this or that, that we're gonna need in the future. And I just wrote it down, whatever we were missing. So one of these things, which we're gonna need at some point, but not immediately, that's the, the hose for the gas filler. John said that he has his old one, but these, they dry out and when they're old, they start letting fumes go into the cockpit and it smells bad. So for sure we're going to need to change it. So the transmission cover seal, we need that soon. The gasket between the windshield frame and the body. I ordered that because I wanted to install the windshield frame as soon as possible so I can de deal with the rods that stick under the dash before I assemble the dash completely but I forgot that I actually need also the trim to wrap the frame inside and that needs to go before the frame is installed <laughs> so even though I ordered the gasket and I have the gasket now I still can't install the windshield frame but maybe we're gonna finish the dash and install the frame later we're gonna deal with the road with the rods later and I also ordered the windshield gasket so we can install it at some point install the windshield and the finisher and this is a steel braided hose for the clutch slave i don't like the plastic ones so we ordered this one an oil pressure gauge line also steel braided the plastic ones i don't like they explode <laughs> i mean one exploded on me and made a mess of a car that was just painted so i don't like the plastic ones the transmission cover mounting kit actually that's what we needed this is those plastic cones that we kept talking about for the windshield wipers oh they are actually rubber now okay so that's how they go one part goes underneath one goes on on top and we also have the jets and the little tubes that go underneath so maybe that's what we're gonna install first today we can install this as well oil pressure switch because the one on the engine is broken so this is an early engine and it comes with only one prong here we can install that as well and if you remember in one of the previous episodes we tried to rebuild the master cylinder for the brakes but it turned out that we didn't have the kit so now we have the kit we can rebuild that all right so this is the master cylinder and we already had it apart once before we figured out that the rebuild kits that we had were for clutch master and clutch slave and we didn't have for the brake master so now we're gonna take it apart again and i'm gonna show it very quickly again how we do that so we remove the four screws from here and this is our reservoir and here there's this allen key nut inside but to take it out, if you take a regular Allen key, it doesn't fit very well. Well, actually it does fit, but what I did was I drilled 
this one a little bit deeper here so now it can go over this valve inside and it can go deeper so that's it that's what it is we take the valve out but now to take the valve out this valve is what's holding the stem and there's a spring also so the spring is pushing the stem this way and the valve is what's holding it so we have to put a little bit of tension on the spring again to release this valve and the valve comes out and now the stem comes out as well with the spring that's how it was like this so take this out there's another stem inside that we want to take out but we need to blow again I'm sorry I know that we've shown this before but this is for the people who didn't see that video so we have to blow in this hole and air is gonna come from everywhere so I'm gonna plug this like that and I'm gonna hold also here so the plunger doesn't fly away so there you go so what happens is there's a step inside in the bore and this seal here is a little bit smaller than this seal here diameter so this fits in the smaller bore at the back and this fits in the bigger bore so now we can take these out and clean everything because there's rust here and all that so there you go these are the old ones so i'm gonna go now and clean all that even inside with little brushes if i i will find and inside here everywhere and the bore it's nice and clean though, we checked it last time. How is this broken? Um, it shouldn't affect things, right? No. Okay, let me go and clean it and I'll bring you back. Okay, so the body is pretty clean now. I was able to go everywhere, including inside. I washed it in the parts washer and then I cleaned it with uh, brake clean because we don't want the fluid from the parts washer to remain inside and contaminate our dot five that we bought for this application so now let's see the plungers this one it's just a spring we're gonna wash this as well and doesn't come apart anymore other than the little seal so we're gonna take this well this one is pretty pliable which means it's not really bad but we're gonna replace it anyways come on now so this goes for cleaning as well uh, the valve we're gonna replace completely and this plunger here now just like on the clutch master that we reviewed the other day there is a tooth here so we can release this tooth from here like that and now when we pull Come on, and now this should be, should come out like that. There you go. This is where the tooth was grabbing. Now here, this stem, if we compress the spring and push this head to the side, it should come out. Oops, too fast. <laughs> okay this is how it works it goes like this and it goes in but with the spring so the spring the one with the more turns is the one for the front brakes and the one with less turns is for the rear circuit okay and here we also have a very teeny tiny spring that we shouldn't lose that goes inside this cup and there's another seal right here that we need to replace as well okay and on this part as well there's a seal that is pretty much symmetrical both sides there's no open part there but you see what it looks like and the profile is symmetrical where this one was open on one side we're going to talk about the orientation later when we start assembling it so i'm just going to go and clean these parts as well 
All right, so it's all clean, nice and dry now. So let's open our package and dump everything right here. So let's start with the rear brakes because they are deeper inside the cylinder. I don't know why, but there's no assembly loop here. I've seen rebuilding kits that come with assembly loop, like it is like grease, but it's designed for dissolving inside brake fluid. So since we don't have assembly loop, we're gonna use brake fluid. And we're gonna use this one. That's what we're gonna fill up the system with. So that's why I'm gonna put a little bit here. So I'm gonna put all the seals inside actually, like that, to lubricate them. So now we can take the rear one and install it here. So you see how it is. It has a recess on this side. On this side is flat, so the flat part goes toward the big ring here, and the recessed part goes towards this, so this can sit inside here, like that. Okay, so then we have the teeny tiny spring that goes this way. It has bigger diameter and a smaller diameter. The smaller diameter goes this way, and the bigger diameter goes inside this cup, like that. Okay, before we go far too far though, let me do this as well. So here we need to push this tooth in so it can grab later. Like that. I should have prepared that first. Anyway, now I can grab this part again then the sp big spring. So again, the one with more turns is for the front brakes. We're doing the rear ones here. So it goes like this and like this. And then we need to put the head of this stem inside the big hole and slide it towards the center. Oh my God. like that so you see you see it inside yeah and now this is ready to go here but first let's change the seal so here we have this seal that doesn't have direction so it is symmetrical so that's where this one goes Okay, and now we can push this in until the tooth clicks. Okay, we need to make sure that the tooth is catching there so it doesn't come apart. Now it won't come out. And now also this stem can't slide to the side anymore because there was a divot in on the end of this part. So this falls inside it and now it can slide left and right. So this part is ready to go inside the cylinder. So let's put it in before we contaminate it too much. I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone inside here. Can't reach all the way, anyway. And it goes this way. So this is where the other spring needs to match. So and we can put the other spring as well, like that. Now it needs to be pushed all the way. Like I said, there's a step in the bore, so it needs to be pushed until it goes into the smaller bore. Like that. Okay. Now it is all the way in and we have the spring there. So now we only have to assemble this one. The seal for here is this one and it goes right here in this orientation with the open part in. Well, I don't want to use any tools because we might rip it. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna grab this 
on the vice. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's hard, but it it goes in no problem. So we're gonna lubricate it one more time, and we can put it inside like this. The spring needs to be inside again. Don't forget the spring. And now it can go in the bore. And now you can see here, this flange goes past this hole. And that's where we can put the valve. So we're going to take the new valve and we're going to put it in. Do we need to lubricate it? That's metal, so it's fine. Okay, and now the valve should hold it in place like that. Again, I'm going to push a little bit to make sure that the valve is in the right place and now we can tighten this and now if everything is okay the valve should be moving you see it's moving it's able to move in and out no problem it's not pinched or anything now there's these two seals as well one goes here, these don't have direction. And the other one goes here, again, no direction. And now we can put our reservoir. I'm just gonna go clean it a little bit before I put it on. And the screws underneath and we are done. Oh, and there's of course this seal that goes here inside the cup. We're gonna replace this one as well. Okay, this is clean and I even cleaned it inside with um, brake clean because we need to get rid of the dot 3 brake fluid. There were a little bit of residues inside and also there was lots of <laughs> glue here on the outside from the masking tape. And here, to change this seal, you simply pull this out. That's it. And take out this seal from here. Nothing wrong with this one, but anyway, you see there's also brake fluid here that we want to get rid of. Put the new one. This one we don't need to lubricate because it is not moving. It's not sliding back and forth, so... And then it clicks again. There you go. Make sure that these seals are still here. Flip it upside down. There you go. Many people commented the last time when I rebuilt cylinders that they are very cheap and it's better to buy a new one. Well, I disagree because the reproduction parts nowadays are not great. This one is Lucas original cylinder why would I replace it when I can rebuild it? I don't understand. The new ones are cheap, yeah, but why are they cheap? Because they're cheap, <laughs> that's why. They're cheaply made. So wherever I can, I prefer to rebuild my original parts than replacing them with new reproduction parts. That's it. We're ready to put this on the car, but before we put it on the car, we have other things to do deeper in the engine bay, so we're gonna wait to install that. And by that I mean we have to install the PDWA here. Underneath we have to, like I want to take out that uh, oil pressure relief valve housing and paint it. We have to change this switch that is broken here. This fuel pump, I don't know why it is loose. Can't remember. I don't know what's the case with it, but it needs to come out to be de-rusted again and maybe paint the top cover. I usually paint that silver so it doesn't rust. And I have to figure out what's going on with it. Maybe it needs to be rebuilt. Maybe that's the original pump that came with the car. 
that flooded the engine with uh, fuel. And when we run the car, maybe I borrowed, yeah, I, when I was running random TR6s, I was borrowing my GT6 fuel pump for that, I remember. Maybe this needs to be rebuilt and that's why I left it loose. We'll have to take it out and see. But anyways, yeah, so that needs to be taken care of. We need to connect, this is the rear brake circuit, so that needs to connect here to the PDWA. For the front one, we're even missing the line that goes from that three-way splitter to here. So we're gonna have to find that line, or we can make a new one if we have to. Well, this PDWA needs cleaning as well. So that's what we can do too at the, on the bench. So yeah, let me deal with this part here, and then we're gonna deal with the brakes. Okay, so we replaced the oil pressure switch and I took the valve housing from down there out and I painted it, took out the fuel pump and I was gonna start running the oil pressure line here, but I noticed that it has thousands of instructions with it. So I decided to pass that and show it to you because it has so many instructions. I don't remember why, but I think it has something to do with the adapters here. But yeah, anyways, let's read the instructions together and see what's going on here is the pump and the valve housing painted i decided to paint it silver just because the silver engine and ammo was closer <laughs> anyway let's read the instructions start the vehicle and check for leaks okay so for 0.7 we're gonna have to wait a little bit more <laughs> okay so yeah that's that's what it is what they're saying is on the adapters you only put teflon tape on the side that goes into the engine but not on the part where it has the cone on towards the hose and on this one too teflon tape should go here but not on the side towards the hose because here we have the cone and the shrink tube in here is supposed to protect the wiring so you have to position it wherever you think is best to protect your wiring and then heat it with a, they say with a match or a lighter but i recommend using a heat gun <laughs> heat it and it is and it's gonna stay there so that's basically what the instructions say okay well looks like this is with words 916 is too big half inch is too small but we have with words sockets that one of you guys sandy sent to me so it looks like it is this one quarter inch <laughs> let's see fits like a glove wow so this is the difference between the two so this one is gonna go into the engine like that so we're gonna use again this picture that i downloaded from internet I don't know who made it, but it is really useful. It shows where everything on the bulkhead goes. So oil pressure pipe clamp. So there's a clamp here next to the PDWA. We have this one is for the oil pressure line. Okay. The other one doesn't look like the brake line is fitting into it anyway. And then from there, here, oil pressure pipe goes into the right side out of these two, like this, so perfect. So this is the clamp that they were showing there. And of course this hole was the same size as here, so it was too small. So I took a drill bit and I literally made the hole a little bit bigger and now it holds perfect. I installed the valve back down there. Now let me deal with the fuel pump. Okay, I took the pump apart and it turns out that I did rebuild it. I mean, this is a brand new plate here, spring and everything underneath. These are brand new valves. So I did rebuild it. However, I didn't paint any of that and it's surface rusted. So I'm gonna clean the screws again and this and I'm gonna paint it. Maybe I'm gonna paint the screws as well. Should I? Yeah, why not? With the silver paint so they don't rust again and then we're gonna assemble it and install it on the car 
Okay, these are painted and while they're drying, let's make sure that the PDWA is clean inside and it is centered because what it does actually, front brakes and rear brakes are separated. This is one tube and this is another tube, but they are connected with a piston inside here or a plunger. So if you lose pressure on one or the other front or rear circuits, this piston inside gets pushed towards the circuit with lower pressure from the higher pressure. Now it is off center and this little switch now all of a sudden has ground here on this contact here and that gives you a warning light on your dash. So that's what the pressure differential warning assembly does. So in the first place we have to clean it to make sure that there's no debris inside, there's no residues of the dot 3 brake fluid inside and we also have to make sure that it is centered. So let's take it apart. Okay, so this is the piston that goes left and right. It has seals here, but we don't have them. So we're gonna have to reuse them. Hopefully they are still good. Yeah, my fingernail still sinks into them, so hopefully they're good. And that's what happens. The switch sits right like this in the middle, and if it gets pushed to one side, it just pushes up on the switch and presses on that. That's it. And somebody asked me before if they can remove the switch to see if this is centered inside without leaking all the brake fluid. Well, here's your answer. If these seals are good, you should be able to take out the switch without any problems because there shouldn't be brake fluid in the middle here, in the middle part. Anyway, I'm gonna go wash this in the parts cleaner. I'm gonna do the same as for the master cylinder. I'm gonna clean inside everywhere and then we're gonna assemble it. Okay, so it's all cleaned up and before I assemble it, I just wanted to show you this switch here. It has two terminals at the top, but they are basically doing the same thing. They are just hooked up together. I don't know why they are two. They both get connected to the pin under the switch when it gets pushed up. When the pin is down, it gets disconnected from the two terminals. So obviously, even though there are seals on the piston, it's still grounded through the body of the PDWA and it transfers the ground to the pin. And when the piston pushes the pin up, that ground also transfers to the two pins on the top. So that's how the switch works. So let's assemble it. The piston doesn't have direction. It just goes in any direction you want. And with something pointy, you can make sure that the piston is centered and then you can put the switch, which should go pretty easy without any tension. If you start putting tension on it, this means that the piston is not centered. And then tighten it very gently because it's plastic. Don't throw in the threads, right? That's it. And then you can just put the plug. The plug has a copper washer on it. Don't forget that. Otherwise you're gonna lose pressure. Then you can connect the lines. And for the two lines, you need to know that the front circuit of the PDWA has bigger size threads so it takes 7 16 fitting even though the line itself is the same so the line itself is 3 16 for front and back but the fittings for the front are 7 16 threads in and out of the pdwa and for the rear lines you have again 3 16 line but with 3 8 threads on the fittings everywhere so in the entire brake system there's only three places where you have bigger size threads. These are the two sides of the front line on the PDWA and the output for the front brakes on the master cylinder. So it doesn't matter where you connect this thing, one or the other, you just put it there and that's all. So that's how these bolts and these two go to the master cylinder later the fuel pump is also assembled and installed and the fuel line is 
connected. We don't have carbs yet on that side, but we're gonna get there. So I'm not gonna connect this brake line yet. This is the one that goes here and the rear one. We need to bend it a little bit to make it work. And from here, we go down to the three-way splitter, but I'm not gonna connect them yet because I want to disconnect all the lines from the wheels and blow air through here to make sure that there's nothing remaining inside i mean uh, dot three brake fluid but i think now we can actually install the brake master and the clutch master here okay so this is our slave and master for the clutch the ones that we rebuilt like two weeks ago and now we can install them but like i said i don't trust these lines the plastic lines so for this reason we bought this one it is still braided it's much better a stainless steel braided one i don't know why this fitting is so big it is the same threads but it's so much bigger anyway that's the one that goes on the slave i'm gonna put it here wow <laughs> it's huge anyway that's where this goes we can tighten this later and this needs to hook up here so let me take this apart and clean it up a little bit we need to keep the adapter and replace this fitting here okay so i cleaned this as much as i could i sprayed brake clean and um, blew air through it so it's pretty clean we can attach this now actually i'm gonna tighten it on the vise because it's gonna be hard to tighten later there you go and now here it's important to put your bolt in first because if you don't put it actually i was going to use these bolts but uh, they are a little bit too short when you put the spring washer yeah it's not long enough so i'm gonna use longer bolts but this bolt you can't put it here if you have the fitting connected so you have to put your bolt first and then install this part right okay we're gonna leave it loose too and this is gonna be for the bottom Okay, let me stow it in the car now. And that's how it goes. The line goes down and there's a little clamp here for it that holds it in place. And then this just hangs down now, but later we're gonna connect it to the slave when we install it because the slave is still on the bench. So now let me install to the brake master. Okay, so the master cylinder got mounted on the booster and the booster has these four rods that go through the four holes on the bulkhead and now i need to somehow hold it here with one hand and with the other reach underneath and bolt it but now that we don't have the windshield frame here it's possible i already tried i can reach so i'm gonna put the four nuts and then we're gonna see how we're gonna mount these lines here these brake lines because uh, like I said, they need to be crossed. Okay, so nice and solid. And now this is how these need to line up here. Uh, so I might need to play a little bit with them, with the shape, but you see how they cross. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, they cross and they switch places up there they're like this but down on the pdwa they're like this here okay they fit nicely i tightened them tightened them down there on the pdwa as well and now this part of the brake system is complete we just need to connect this here and this there i know that the rest of the brakes are connected under the car because i drove the car i mean 
half of the car, <laughs> whatever, but th at that time the brakes were working. However, like I said, now I want to disconnect all the brake lines from the wheels and blow air. And we also have to flush the calipers and the rear wheel uh, cylinders. So that's why we're not gonna connect anything on this side of the PDWA yet. Uh, oh, now I can actually connect this. This is my oil pressure line here. Bang! One more electrical connection done. <laughs> okay, next let's deal with this like bezels, whatever they are called. And we also gonna have to install this seal here on the opening. For that we're gonna have to remove the cover and that's gonna make it also easier for us to reach underneath and hold the wheel boxes. So to remove this, it's easy. There are springs here. So these springs need to come out. Okay. Okay, and now we can open it more and remove these two screws. There must be three. There's only, tr only two here. What are they, 5 sixteenths? Yeah. So now these nuts here had me puzzled once, like I couldn't figure out what size they were and I thought it was with wood, but finally I figured it out. And they are actually not hexagon, they are octagon, which means with eight points, not six. <laughs> so the only wrench that I could use here is an adjustable. But the problem is that sometimes they seize because the wheel box is aluminum so we have to be really careful. Oh, and now we have to be careful with the paint as well. Okay, this one is moving. That's good. Okay, that's easier for me. Maybe you don't see well, but I'm sorry. So this is what the nuts look like. Octagon, like a stop sign. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna clean them and I'll bring you back. Okay, so this is what we have inside the kit. And you also, you can see here that the opening for the rod to stick out is also oval, it's not round. And that's for the, for the simple reason that here, through this hole on the side, we need to fish this part and stick it in here. And then on the side here is where the jet goes. So this hole leads to this hole and this is where the actual jet goes. Okay, so that's the wrong one. That's the one for here. So we're gonna deal with it later. Okay, so that's how this goes. So we need to find, there's a little hole here, the actual jet that sprays. And it needs to point toward the glass, but that's gonna be adjusted one day when we have windshield and all that stuff. Okay, so here underneath we have this spacer that's on the wheel box and that goes underneath, that goes above and sandwiches the sheet metal underneath and directs the wheel box in the right direction. But luckily ours are good. These parts underneath are good, so we're not gonna replace them. I checked that from the very beginning, if you remember when we start assembling the car, I said that we have to make sure that everything here is okay, otherwise we need to disassemble half of the dash to get to these underneath. So now we have to make sure that the hose is shoved through this hole on the side, like this. Okay, now we can push this down, push the wheel box up. I'm sorry, but 
I'm going to move you on the other side. Okay, now you can see and I can work. So we need to make sure that this part underneath is in this orientation. It's not like this, right? Because it's going to hold the wheel box down. So it is like this right now. And we can push this down. Perfect. And now we can tighten this nut. Okay. So I'm going to do the other one on my own, pretty much the same thing, and then I'll bring you back for the cover and the seal. All right, so the other one is installed as well. Now we can put the seal. So there's obviously these three holes have to match these three holes here. And there's a channel that fits over this lip that sticks up. And that's it. Now we can put this cover. And I found an extra screw from he for here because there were only two for some reason. Okay, and now we have to attach the spring again. Like that. And the other side. Like that. Okay. Wow. <laughs> the rubber is a little bit too tall. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let it sit like that. Pro hopefully the spring tension is going to compress a little bit the rubber and just make it fit but yeah that's the way there's no other way hopefully it's gonna make its way down so okay i think this is a good point to finish this video here i don't want to make it way too long <laughs> but before i turn the camera off i'd like to talk a little bit about the rusty beauty social media so just Two days ago, our group on Facebook called Rusty Beauties turned two years old. Like, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> and in two years, we got about 3,250 members. I never expected that so many people were going to join, but it is a great thing. So if you're on Facebook, but you don't know about that group, I would suggest that you go and find it. Everybody's sharing their experience with their project. People were asking questions. Other people were helping with the information that they need. YouTubers like me are sharing their content there and it is just a great place to be. And on the second birthday of the group, I decided also to create an Instagram page or account for the group as well. I'm going to be the only one who can post stuff there, but as you may know, I do a lot of projects here, especially in the summer. There are many projects that are coming and going and I don't film everything. So the projects that I'm not filming, at least I'm going to be taking pictures and I'm going to post in there so you can see. So yeah, if you're wondering what's, what these other projects are, you're going to be able to see at least pictures and a little bit of comments on my side about those projects. So I don't know how active I'm going to be on Instagram, but if you are on Instagram, maybe you want to follow that uh, page as well. It's called Rusty Beauties, of course. Other than that, also there is the Patreon page where you can uh, support the channel a little bit. Like I said before, that doesn't buy you anything, but that's a way for some people who choose to support me a little bit financially and help me make some revenue for the hours that I spend on the computer editing these videos. They can support me there. So that's really appreciated because like I said, the Patreon subscription doesn't buy you anything because everything is free already. So I can't give more than that. But even though you can get everything for free, there's still people who choose to support me a little bit financially and that's greatly appreciated. 
other people choose to support me a little bit by sending uh, PayPal transfers every once in a while. Other people are sending me parts that they don't need or tools that they don't need. The support is amazing. I really, really appreciate it, guys. So anyways, I'm rambling again. When I start talking, I don't know when to stop. So <laughs> thank you for everything that you do for me, guys. Thanks for watching and commenting and subscribing and sharing because also sharing my stuff is a great support it is appreciated as well. So thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.